Being a god amongst the deities can be so exhausting. There's always someone needing something. You need more cobblestone to keep working. That's absolutely fine, Mr. Miner. I know there's no possible way imaginable that you'd ever be able to get your hands on cobblestone. You're needing an axe. Sure, why not? I'll go get you that. Don't know why a teacher needs an axe, though. The demands and excuses for not working are endless. And this is the part where you think I'm about to tell you of a nice easy solution to this. Well, actually, you are in luck because there's not. You're still going to need to solve these problems for your citizens in order to keep them working. But I am going to show you a nifty little tool that you could use, which could maybe save you some time in your colony management endeavours. The Colony Map. Let's look into it. The Colony Map is essentially a portable version of the Town Hall's Town Map. They display a map layout of your colony and its surrounding areas, as well as show you information about buildings within the colony. And they have a semi-real-time view of its citizens, including their current whereabouts and any problems they may have. It's this ability to view citizens on the map without being with them in person that makes a colony map a convenient tool to have at your disposal. You can quickly diagnose any problems a citizen may have by simply hovering over their avatar's icon which will tell you what is preventing them from working. No longer will you need to run all the way over to the cookery just to find out that the chef isn't preparing meals because they don't have any fuel for their furnaces. A quick glance on the colony map and you'll know the issue right away. The town map within a town hall functions identically to the colony map. The major advantage the colony map has over it, of course, is its portability. You can use it and view it anywhere, versus having to go back to the town hall each time to check it. The colony map can be crafted by using 8 empty maps and a build tool. Empty maps can be crafted by using 8 pieces of paper and a compass. In order to use a colony map, you'll first need to set it up by sneaking and right clicking on a town hall block with it. You could use any hut block within the colony to set it up actually, but it's probably better to use a town hall, seeing as you'll need access to its interface next anyway. When you first open the colony map, you'll be shown an information page directing you to put normal scale Minecraft maps of your colony into the Town Hall's inventory. The Town Hall's inventory can be accessed by navigating to the Home tab of the Town Hall. Selecting the Town Map option will bring up the Town Map interface, which will display the same information page as before. There's a chest icon to the bottom left corner of the interface, which opens up the Town Hall inventory. This is where you'll place any recorded maps of your colony within. I found that placing Town Maps directly into the storage racks of the Town Hall also works. You'll need to go around your colony with empty maps and use them in different locations to record and map it out. Make sure to view the map after using it to ensure that it was recorded properly and no areas are left blank. You can map outside of your colony as well should you wish, but the colony map is really only useful for within the colony. You'll need at least one recorded map to be placed into the town hall's inventory in order for the colony map to work. The more maps you place in, the fuller the overall map will be. All unmapped areas of your colony will show up blank on the map's interface, although citizen avatars and building huts will still be visible. To navigate around the map, simply click and hold anywhere on the map and drag your mouse around to move about. You can zoom in and out by using the mouse's scroll wheel. The default view is 1 times. The closest or smallest zoom in distance is 0 times. The maximum zoomed out distance is 50 times. I think so anyway, it might be dependent based on how far you've travelled in game. Alongside citizen avatars, the map will also display your own avatars icon on it and it will track you too as you move around. The map always defaults to your location whenever you first open it. If you step outside of the colony's boundary, your avatar will no longer be tracked. Hovering your mouse over a building icon will give you some information about it. You'll be able to see the name of the build and what upgrade level it is, its X and Z coordinates in the world, the number of citizens currently at the build, and the name of the worker employed within it. 
hovering your mouse over a citizen's avatar will give you some information about them, mainly their name and what job they have within the colony, as well as show you any issues they may have which are stopping them from being able to work. You can also click on a citizen's avatar, which will result in a little ding noise if you do so. This will apply a light glow effect on that citizen, highlighting them for a while, making it easier for you to find them. This effect is applied to any citizens you click on, whether they have any problems for you to solve or not. Depending on how advanced your colony is, you will see a certain number amount displayed on the colony map. This number represents how many citizens are currently blocked from working. Basically, the number of morons with problems which you'll need to resolve. You'll most likely find that this number will be small if you have a fairly small colony with not that many workers in it, and it can get quite large quite quickly if you have a more developed colony with lots of workers and potential problems in it. In an ideal scenario, you don't want any numbers showing on the colony map at all, because numbers mean problems, and problems mean citizens are not working, and not working is unproductive, and being unproductive leads to inefficiencies, and the factory will never grow if it's inefficient. One important thing to note about the colony map number is that it's not the same number that's shown on the clipboard. The clipboard's number symbolises how many citizens are requesting items that the delivery system cannot fulfil for them. The colony map number symbolises how many citizens have problems blocking them from working. They are two separate types of problems which you will need to resolve in order to keep the colony working. Citizen avatars may have different symbols above their head. These represent the problems your citizens are experiencing. Citizens with no icon over their head are usually healthy and working as intended. Citizens with orange speech bubbles above their head usually have more mediocre or time-sensitive issues to solve, such as a lack of sleep or wanting better quality food. Citizens with a red cog or thermometer over their head require you to fix a problem for them, which problem you can get details of by hovering over their avatar. Some examples of common problems are lacking the right tools, materials or equipment for use, they are hungry or wanting a better variety of food served, they are sick and awaiting a medical assistance, they are absolutely heartbroken and mourning the death of another citizen who they never knew and never met. You may also find the occasional citizen with a yellow exclamation mark over them. This means the citizen has a quest for you. You can pretty much ignore these if you wish. They shouldn't affect the citizen's work performance. They are more of a tutorial mechanic for those new to the mod. If you zoom out on the map, you'll eventually be shown the main colony's logo and the name of the colony. Hovering over the logo will give you details about that colony. If you hover your mouse over a residence block, it will show you the name and level of the build, where it's located, as well as how many citizens are currently living in it. You'll find similar information if you hover over a guard tower, but you'll also see an outline of the patrol range of the guard. This outline will be bigger or smaller, depending on the level of the guard tower. Post boxes and stashes are also visible on the map as well. The map doesn't seem to work very well for underwater colonies or for colonies in the nether. Weird. Hostile and friendly mobs, visitors to the tavern, as well as citizen grave markers, unfortunately do not show on the map. Don't ask me how I know about that last one. And that's about it. The colony map. A management tool for when you're on the go and wanting to quickly check for any worker problems around the colony. Personally, I haven't really used the map that much, as I still prefer to directly interrogate citizens who aren't working. But I can see how this could potentially save you time in the long run, not having to travel to a worker to see why they aren't working. A quick look at the colony map, and you can monitor the performance of your colony from it. I've just thought of a potentially good use for the map actually. We've all been there, it's turn night and everyone should be in bed. We are standing around, also ready to go to bed, just waiting on that all idiots are in bed message and it doesn't show. So you pull out the colony map and see if you can spot any citizens not in bed, probably stuck somewhere in the world. Then find them and discreetly encourage them to get a move on and get to bed. Granted, with that being said, I rarely let my idiots sleep. It's unproductive. Anyway, check out the colony map for yourself. See if it's a potential new tool for your management arsenal. 
Thanks for watching.